familiar with this sort of rapier, um, and when someone uses the word rapier, you probably think of one of these things. Um, this is the late form of rapier, and these were used for about a hundred years. But there's a much earlier form of rapier, which is one of these. Now, archaeologists have given it the term rapier um, because they wanted to distinguish it from a dagger, and they wanted to distinguish it from a sword, and they thought, well, we'll call it a rapier. Now, you'll notice that it starts wide, gets narrow quite quickly, and then it's got a long, thin blade. Long and thin, but not anything like as long and thin as the later form of rapier. This is a Bronze Age rapier, and these were in use for about 400 years. So, uh, just because they were used for four times as long, maybe they're four times as important, and we should you know, spend four times as long talking about them. Um, one thing um, to note is that they are riveted. The handle is held onto the blade, in this case with just two rivets, sometimes it's more, and that suggests a thrusting use for them, because if I were to chop with this, then that would put a lot of uh, stress on those rivets, and, and this one's only got two rivets and they're quite small, so that does suggest that uh, a thrusting use was preferred. Um, but then again, there are quite definitely chopping swords from later periods that still have riveted handles, so that doesn't mean that they were, not, they were never used for chopping. And uh, recent experiments by uh, Newcastle University have suggested that these are surprisingly effective uh, at the chop, so we can't rule out a, a chopping use for them. But everything about it just says stab, doesn't it? Um, the later ones are slightly longer. It takes them a couple of centuries to get from this to this, but really they're pretty much the same sort of thing. Now, a shorter thing is called a dirk. Here is a, a dirk blade. It's not uh, on a half, but you can see it's the same sort of thing. Again, wide at the base, narrowly, uh, very quickly getting narrow, and then coming to a very stabby point. Um, and archaeologists had to decide what the difference was between a dirk and a rapier, and they just picked an arbitrary length. I think it was 10 inches or something like that. So shorter than 10 inches, they called it a dirk, and longer, it's a rapier. Um, the, terms, the term dirk is perhaps uh, uh, interesting because we associate that with Scotland, and these were very popular in Scotland. In fact, they lasted uh, in use in Scotland for quite a bit longer than elsewhere in Europe. And I do wonder if sometimes they might not have been used in the left hand, much like, like uh, the dirk uh, from the historical periods that we're familiar with in Scotland. And perhaps in the other hand, they had a club, which hasn't survived because it would have been made of wood. Or perhaps a palstave, a contemporary form of axe. So that's one way that these might have been used. Um, they do have a ricasso, a blunt bit, at the base of the blade, so you can hold them with one finger over the top like that which uh, gives you a little bit more control over the blade, but you've got nothing to stop someone slicing your fingers off, uh, so it's unlikely you would parry another blade with one of these. Uh, you would prefer to have something else, perhaps a small buckler in your other hand, and you could... I can imagine people fighting with these, uh, with the buckler in front to protect their hand, waiting for an opening, and then stabbing in when one came. So there you go. Quick introduction to the Bronze Age rapier.